Welcome to Master Mathematics in Minutes. Today, we'll talk about how to score 95% to 100% consistently in mathematics. So you may be wondering, who is this video for? The answer is, scoring well in mathematics is for everyone. And I mean it, it is for everyone. And it is also completely your choice. So mathematics is a unique subject. It is unlike the other subjects that you may encounter in the sense that if you're willing to put in the hard work and if you know the underlying techniques, you will be able to score very high in the subject consistently. So how do we do that? We will discuss a framework that has benefited numerous people and we're keen to share this with the wider community. This framework contains five pillars and as we go through each of these pillars, I would encourage you to rate yourself on how well you score in each of these pillars. The first pillar is around problem solving. To score well in mathematics, you'll need to learn how to solve the correct problem. So say you may rate yourself to have a 95% competency in this area. The second pillar is around speed. To be able to score well in mathematics, you'll need to be able to complete questions in the given time constraints. So say you may rate yourself to have 91% competency in this area. And the third pillar is around accuracy. To score well in mathematics, you'll need to be able to complete questions accurately or arrive at the correct answer. So say you may rate yourself to have a 97% competency in this area. The fourth pillar is a slightly different pillar, but it's also an important one. It's around the concept of happiness. To score well in mathematics, it's important to be happy as part of your study preparation as well as in the process of sitting an examination. So say you may rate yourself to have a 98% competency in this area. We'll offer further tips on how to increase your happiness later. And the final pillar is around the concept of reward. So mastering mathematics is a long journey, but it's important to break that journey down into much shorter journeys of say 15 to 30 minute intervals. And once you have accomplished your goal, you should reward yourself. So say, you might rate yourself to have 100% competency in this area. We'll offer further tips on each of these pillars now. The first pillar is about problem solving. As part of your study preparation, it's important to divide and conquer. That allows you to determine what to learn. So that involves breaking down really large topics down into subtopics until it is easily understood. And these need to be in time manageable slots, for example, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or one hour. So instead of saying, I will learn mathematics today, you could say, for example, I will learn geometry with a focus on the area of a circle for 30 minutes today. And that is much more defined and it allows you to plan. So when sitting an examination, it's also important to divide and conquer. That allows you to determine what to solve. So when you're given a huge problem, it's important to break that problem down into sub-problems until it is easily solved. And it's important to link the problem back to the topics and subtopics that you've learned as part of your study preparation. And you should break these down into time manageable slots as well so that it's easier to see the bigger picture. The second pillar is around speed. As part of your study preparation, you should complete practice questions at increasing speeds. So when you're first starting out, you may complete questions much more slowly. But as you complete further questions, you should be able to complete these much faster. So the analogy to that is the first walk, then jog, then run, and finally, you should sprint. And the second tip is to attempt as many practice questions as required to solidify your understanding. It's important that you ensure that you completely understand what you're learning. When you're sitting an examination, it's important to take on the concept of speedy pass exam papers. So shortly before an examination, perhaps two to three hours before an examination, you should attempt 
pass exam papers at twice the speed. That allows you to warm up leading up to the exam and it sets you in the mood. And it's important to acknowledge that time management is critical as well. So this works in reverse compared to how you would prepare as part of your study preparation. You would sprint and then run and then jog and finally you will walk. So what I mean by that is you should answer questions that you're most confident first. So these are perhaps topics that you have mastered really well. And so you will be able to complete these questions really quickly. And it allows you to secure the time advantage. And you can then use the extra time for the harder questions that will require more thinking. And essentially, you'll be walking through these questions rather than sprinting. The third pillar is around accuracy. As part of your study preparation, you should be able to understand, recall, and apply mathematical concepts. By completing practice questions, you will be able to increase your level of understanding. And where you require support, you should ask your teacher effective questions to increase your level of understanding. And you should also make a list of all the important formulas to help you recall. And where you've made a mistake, you should write down a list of common mistakes so that you can avoid them in the future. And you could also teach another student because that allows you to apply what you've learned in a different setting. And if the student understands you, you've applied your concepts well. By completing past exam papers, you'll be able to apply what you've learned. In an examination, you should be able to recall and apply. You should write down related ideas, formulas, or concepts. And once you've done that, you're able to eliminate the irrelevant ones. And that allows you to focus on the important ones. And once you've narrowed down what to apply, it's easier to solve questions. It is also important to showcase your problem-solving skills by presenting steps logically, concisely, and clearly. Remember, the examiner is keen to see your problem-solving skills as well as how much you've understood. And finally, it's important to check your answers as well. The fourth pillar is around the concept of happiness. As part of your study preparation, it's important to check that you're happy because that increases the quality of your study preparation. You should also start off with the hardest topics and slowly move on to the easy ones because the intention is to build your knowledge. And people tend to be happiest once they've mastered the hardest topics, not the easiest topics. In an examination, you should also be happy and calm. And it works in reverse here, in the sense that you should attempt the easiest questions first and slowly move on to the harder ones. Because the intention is to build your confidence. The more easy questions you solve, the greater your confidence grows, and that puts you in a much better position to tackle the harder questions. It's an incredibly simple pillar to apply. The fifth and final pillar is around the concept of reward. As part of your study preparation, you may ask, when is the best time to reward myself? The answer is now, right now. Remember, mastering mathematics is a very long journey, but you're able to break that down into much shorter journeys of 15 to 30 minute intervals. And once you've accomplished your goal, you should celebrate that win. So the entire journey will be a series of wins. So you may, for example, grab a cup of coffee, or listen to your favorite song, and so on. And you may be surprised, the strongest of feelings of happiness happens here, not when you receive your examination result. So once you have been through an examination, when is the best time to reward yourself? The answer is any time, it is your choice. And this is the big wind. You could, for example, go watch a movie, embark on a holiday, and so on. Thank you very much for watching. This is Master Mathematics in Minutes. If you found this video to be useful, please subscribe for more videos, and we wish you all the best.